Hello, this is teacher Alex from Phuket Pulse and welcome to the next GD Science Screencast episode 3 on test questions. If you find this video in any way helpful, please hit the subscribe button below. This allows us to help more people like you. All right. So the first question we are looking at today is about Earth's atmosphere and about reading graphs and tables and making connections in between uh, both um, that we are given. <clears throat> so let's have a look first uh, on what we see here. We see a table where we see the composition of Earth's atmosphere. We see the different substances from Earth's atmosphere, different gases, nitrogen, oxygen, argon, carbon dioxide, neon, helium, methane, krypton and hydrogen. So very precise here. And we see on the right side a pie chart which tells us the same thing, the composition of Earth's atmosphere by percent volume, where we have nitrogen, oxygen, argon and carbon dioxide and all other trace amounts. So the big difference, I'm not sure if you have spotted it already, is that in our table we have for the gases concentration in parts per million and on the right side we have the composition by per cent. Let's have a look at the question. The concentration of substances in a mixture can be expressed in multiple formats. Using the information in the table and graph, what percent of the atmosphere's total volume is made up of hydrogen? So, the problem that we are facing here is they ask for hydrogen and percent. If we look at percent, which graph or which part uh, of the information given do we look at? Yes, we look at the pie chart, percent volume. We want to know percent. Of what? Of hydrogen. Well, here is the problem. Hydrogen is not in our pie chart. And this is the problem of the question they want us to solve. So we have to compare parts per million with percent. And we have to have a really close look on the table and graph to make the connection between both of them and find the appropriate answer for the question. So what we are given is hydrogen in this table in parts per million, not percent. So even if we are not sure, okay, how do we get from parts per million to percent? What is percent? Percent is parts per hundred cent, like century. <clears throat> a hundred cent is one euro, for example. A century is a hundred years. Percent is per one hundred. Parts per million is per million. Oh. All right. So. How can we solve the conversion? What we are given is nitrogen in percent and we are given nitrogen in parts per million. And now we can see, okay, how do we get from parts per million to percent? What do we have to do? Here we have 780,000 and here we have 78 percent. That means we have a conversion factor of Yes, correct, 10,000. That means that 0 0.5 parts per million is 10,000 times smaller in expressed in percent. The only answer that is smaller than 0 0.5 is answer A. That means don't even have to do our calculation since A is the only answer that is smaller than 0 0.5, it has to be A. Next question. This question is about definitions and understanding the definitions of occurrence and be able to make connections between the information given about currents and wind patterns. So let's have a look at our paragraph first. Ocean currents 
are streams of water that flow in continuous directed paths within the ocean. Currents moving through the upper 400 meters of the ocean are classified as surface currents. Currents that flow at greater depths are classified as deep water currents. Which types of currents can be better understood by studying the paths of global wind patterns? A. Surface currents. B. Deep water currents. C. Both surface and deep water currents. D. Neither surface nor deep water currents. So we have to use the information that we are given here and understand, as I said earlier, the definitions. So surface currents are moving in the upper 400 meters of the ocean, whereas deep water currents move below these 400 meters. Another term that's important to understand here is the term surface, which means the outside part or the uppermost layer of something. So which of these currents, surface or deep water currents, is affected by wind. If we have a look at it, we can see, okay, surface currents in the top layer, deep water currents 400 meters and below. And for sure, the surface of the water is in contact with the atmosphere and thus can be influenced by wind. So the only current that is, that can be uh, better understood or the current that can be better understood by studying global wind patterns are surface currents. All right, let's go to our last question for today. This question is again related to reading a diagram and relate the information to a short paragraph in our question. Let's read first. Sunscreen lotions and sprays are designed to provide a barrier against UVA and UVB rays only. What information in the diagram explains why sunscreens are not designed to protect against UVC rays? If we look at the diagram, what do we see? We have to orientate ourselves first. Here we have the Earth. Up here we have the sun and in between we have our atmosphere with the ozone layer. Then we get some information about the different UV rays, their wavelengths, and we see UVA passing through the ozone layer, UVB passing through the ozone layer, UVB, UVC, which is extremely dangerous, is blocked completely by the ozone layer. So UVA and UVB are able to pass the ozone layer, whereas UVC is completely blocked by the ozone layer. That means it doesn't reach Earth's surface, and if we are standing down here and using sunscreen lotion, we only need to be protected from UVA and UVB because UVC is blocked by the ozone layer. So C is our correct answer. All right, this was it for today's screencast, episode three on test questions for GED Science. I hope I could help you again in the preparation for your exam and hope to see you next time. Have a good day.